All right, I'm pulling a Mr. Rogers. So you remember when Mr. Rogers would walk into the house, he'd take off his sports coat and put on a sweater. And when he put on the sweater, that meant it was time to sing songs and tell stories and play with puppets. And so when I put on my flight jacket, that means it's time to talk about aviation. So when people ask, hey, what did you do in the Navy? I'll say, oh, I was an F-14 Rio. And generally that'll generate a quizzical look. And so I'll use an analogy, a pop culture analogy. And I'll say, oh, you remember the movie Top Gun? Maverick and Goose, I was Goose. And usually that clears it up. Actually, increasingly with the young kids these days, they haven't seen the movie Top Gun, which is surprising to me, but okay. So if somebody has seen the movie, they'll generally ask questions about the movie's accuracy, and I'm happy to talk about that. And the two main subjects that come up are, would that flat spin have happened the way that it's sequenced in the movie? And would Goose have hit his head on the canopy like that? Is that realistic? So let's talk about those two things. So I have a model here, because as we know, we expect the highest production values here at my channel. So this is a model that replicates my first deployment in the first squadron I was in, VF-32, the swordsman, and you can see the, the swordsman, which is the tomcat with a sword, and the gypsy is because our tactical call sign on the radio was gypsy. And this would be gypsy 214. And this is the first airplane that ever had my name on the back seat, on the canopy rail right? Me and Wilco West. Wilco was the best man at my wedding. So the F-14, big airplane, swept wing fighter, 20 degrees all the way forward, slow speed, 68 degrees all the way back, high speed. So when you're dog fighting, generally you'd be with the wings all the way forward. So in the movie, you'll remember Iceman and Maverick and the bandits in front of them and they're trying to prosecute a solution, and it's very close range, much closer than it would be in real life, but that's movies, right? So Maverick flies through Iceman's jet wash and flames out one of his engines and gets into a flat spin. And somebody transmit, transmits on the radio, Maverick's in a flat spin, he's headed out to sea. So part A, that's not a flat spin. A flat spin is not like throwing a Frisbee where the jet would be traveling across the ground laterally. A flat spin, the airplane's coming straight down. So let's talk about how a real flat spin would happen. So it could happen in a dogfight. The F-14 had good slow speed characteristics because it's a big airplane with a lot of lift. In fact, 25% of the lift was generated by the fuselage. It also had gigantic horizontal stabilizers. These are about the size of an A4's wing, a smaller airplane. In fact, in the movie Top Gun, there are A4s. So the airplane didn't roll very quickly. It didn't have ailerons. It used spoilers to roll. But it could have good pitch authority because of the size of these horizontal stabilizers. So... If we got into a slow speed fight, which could be desirable depending on who you're fighting, and if you're fighting what was called a MiG-28, which is really an F-5F in the movie, you'd probably want to get into a slow speed fight with that guy. Because that's a fast airplane, little airplane. You don't want to get far away. You might lose sight. So you want to keep him close, in the phone booth as we call it. So you could get into a slow speed, high angle of attack fight. So the F-14A, which had the TF-30 Pratt & Whitney engine, Later, the B and the D had the General Electric F-110. The way you can tell the difference, if you Google F-14 and you look at the back, TF-30 has black exhaust nozzle. The F-110 has silver exhaust nozzle. Now, most of the squadrons I were in were TF or were F-110 GE motors, the B model, which was a lot better engine, more thrust, more reliable. It had an issue with the afterburner liner that they had to fix, and then once they did, it was good to go. Um, but my first squadron was an A squadron. In the movie Top Gun, those F-14s are A's, right? So compressor stalls were a big problem 
in the A. That TF-30 was not originally built for the F-14. It was built for the F-111. So they kind of morphed it into something that would fit in the airplane. And as a result, in certain flight regimes, it had a tendency to compressor stall. So high angle of attack, slow speed fight. We'd maybe interrupt the airflow into one of the engines and it would compressor stall. So now you have asymmetric thrust, which is a problem. These engines are not perpendicular. They're counted out, canted outward a little bit. So if I'm at low airspeed, high angle of attack, and I lose this engine, immediately I'm going to have this yaw rate. And if I don't recognize that yaw rate and counter it, and the way you would counter it is by using rudder, not stick. And so F-14 student pilots early on were told by instructors that rudders are very important in the F-14, especially in high angle attack. Because if I was to say, oh, I need to roll right, and I put the stick right, the airplane would actually roll off to the left and maybe get into a flat spin. So what I meant when I said I need to roll right is I actually need to put in right rudder, and then the airplane would roll. But let's say, again, I have a compressor stall, boom, now... I have this asymmetric thrust. If I don't recognize it and counter it by both throttles idle, put the stick forward, lock your harness was the other bold face procedure right away because you'd immediately get this incredible eyeball out G, which would throw the pilot against the stick. So if, I, if that happened, the airplane would go into a flat spin. And if you get into a fully developed flat spin, the airplane cannot recover. Which gets us into the second question, which is, would that happen where Goose would hit his head on the canopy? Well, let me show you an ejection sequence here. So, this is on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. You can see the F-14 behind this one on the cat is getting blown over the side and boom. Okay, so what you saw there was the ejection sequence. So, either the pilot of the Rio pulls the ejection handle. First thing that happens is the canopy comes off, right? There's no through the canopy ejections like there are in some airplanes, like the Harrier. So canopy comes off. Half a second later, the back seat fires. 0.4 seconds after that, the front seat fires. Okay, so in a flat spin, what they discovered by this actually happening to a Rio, the canopy, when it's jettisoned, if there's not a, an additional couple of milliseconds, has a tendency to not separate from the air, airplane very far. And so what happened is they pulled the handle, and this Rio actually did hit his head on the canopy in, the, in a flat spin. So they modified the emergency procedures that the second to last step was canopy jettison. So in the movie, Goose does this wrong. He should have jettisoned the canopy before pulling the ejection handle. Okay, so that's not unrealistic. That plot line was based on something that happened in real life. But again, the way that the flat spin is related in terms of heading out to sea is, is not accurate, right? Okay, so I wrote an article, as I've mentioned in a previous show, called 79 Cringeworthy Errors in the Movie Top Gun. So if you Google errors in Top Gun, this article will come up. And it's kind of fun. I... I warn you, if you read it, you'll never watch the movie in, in the same light. But, you know, it's a fun movie. Um, in real life, the Navy was very good to me in that I was able to fly the F-14 for about three quarters of my 20 years in the Navy. Um, and I'm very proud of that fact, about, you know, 2,000 plus hours in the F-14. Fly Five extended deployments. Uh, the F-14 went away in 2007. In fact, we had a huge party uh, in honor of that. Cheap Trick played. I got to sit in with Cheap Trick and 
play the song Surrender with him, which is definitely a bucket list item for me. Um, the airplane is actually more capable as it approached retirement than it was in the early years. Because in addition to improving the engines to the F-110, they also fixed the flight controls into, they added what was called digital flight control system. So I mentioned the high angle of attack thing. So I also mentioned that it was a bad idea at high angle of attack to roll the stick or put the stick right if you wanted to roll right because it would go the other way and could create a flat spin. So what digital flight controls do is if I roll the stick right at high angle of attack, how the computer's like, okay, I, I know what you mean, but I'm going to fix this for you. So right stick actually would be right rudder and the airplane would not depart controlled flight. Now this is what the Superhorn has, F-16. Any modern airplane has got a, 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 a digital flight control system that keeps the pilot from doing things that would cause the airplane to depart controlled flight. So unfortunately, when the airplane, when the F-14 got to the end of its life, it became very costly and time consuming to maintain. So here comes the Super Hornet. So a lot of the F-14 squadrons that I was in are now Super Hornet squadrons, either E, which is one seat, or F, which are two seat. So VF is now VFA. And uh, there you go. Now, the F-14 may not be out of the public eye completely. Because if you see the trailer for Top Gun Maverick, at the very beginning, an F-14 flies through the frame. So that's a teaser. Don't know, as I've said in the previous episode where I was beseeching Paramount and Tom Cruise to release that movie now for the morale of the nation in this COVID-19 environment. But there's an F-14 in the movie. So we'll have to see what that means in terms of the plot. But... As I said, I'm grateful that I was able to spend a lot of time in that airplane and get paid to do it. It's one of those kind of jobs that is very rare and I'm very proud of. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for your support, subscribing and liking and sharing. I very much appreciate it.